Hi friends, Miss Riley here. I hope that you're having a great day today. I know I am. I am wearing my colorful shirt to show something that we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna be learning about color. We're gonna learn the color theory on a watercolor snail. So today we're gonna be making a watercolor snail using color. Today, before we get into drawing our watercolor snail, we have to learn a few words. First, we have to learn what color means. Color is described as the way that we describe an object based on the way that it reflects light. I would say that this color is blue based on the way that it is reflecting off of the paper. So, when we learn about color theory and color, we have to learn about the color wheel. Have you ever heard about the color wheel? Let's look at the color wheel. We have red, purple, blue, green, yellow, and orange on this color wheel. And each color represents and signifies a specific kind of color. There are primary colors and there are secondary colors. Our red, blue, and yellow are our primary colors. They're going to be the colors that we can use to make other colors. Then we have orange, purple, and green, which are made by mixing our primary colors together. So when we make our watercolor snail, we're going to be able to mix colors together to make secondary colors by using our primary colors. For today's materials, you're gonna need a watercolor piece of paper, a pencil, a watercolor palette, paintbrush, and a cup of water. But the water doesn't need to be too full, you just need a little bit. So, first we're gonna start with drawing our snail. See how in this photo, I first have drawn the snail and then we're going to put watercolors on top of it. So, we're gonna start with drawing a big circle in the middle of our paper. So we want to draw a big circle in the middle of our paper. Now we need to draw the snail's body. So you're gonna start at halfway through your circle and draw a half circle. And then you just wanna start waving it around and then draw a little point for a tail and connect it at the bottom of your circle. Now we're going to draw pie shaped pieces. So that way we have a spot to put our watercolors in. You're gonna first start by making a dot at the end of your circle. See how I made that? It's gonna be halfway in the middle of your circle and you're gonna draw a straight line all the way to the other side. Then you're gonna draw a dot in the center of your circle, right there. And we have to draw six lines from this dot. So count with me, we're gonna draw one diagonal line from the dot to the end of our circle like that. Then we're gonna draw another line all the way to the other side. So now we have one, two, three, four. Now we need two more lines. Same way that we did the first ones, but now we're gonna take our pencil and go down. So we're gonna start at our dot and go all the way down to the bottom. And then we're gonna start at the other side 
and go all the way down to the bottom. So now we should have six pie shaped pieces. Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six pie shaped pieces on our snail. We have drawn our snail and sketched a picture of him. We have to get our water that is halfway full, our watercolor palette, and a paintbrush. Miss Riley wants to say one thing. You're going to need an area that you can work on that you might accidentally spill water on. And that's okay, because sometimes messes happen. But we want to make sure that we talk to our parents and get in a safe spot that you won't mess up anything in your household. So be careful and make sure you talk to your parents before doing this project. It is very important to stay safe and to keep our area as clean as possible and not ruin anything that we own. Now that you have had time to get your water cup and your watercolor and your paintbrush, it's time to start watercoloring. We are going to first start with our primary colors. And like I said earlier, primary colors are going to be the colors that help us make other colors. So they're going to be your red, your blues, and your yellows. And each color in the middle of our primary colors are going to be the colors that we call secondary colors, and they are created by mixing two primary colors together. So let's start by first painting a red pie-shaped piece. You're gonna want to dip your paintbrush in a little bit of water, just get it nice and wet, and then you're gonna wanna go into a red color in your paint palette. So we want to try to get it they get it on our paintbrush. We don't need to dig in the paints. We just want to get it nice and colored on our paintbrush. And we might need to get a little bit more water to make sure our, our air our paint is nice and moist. So now that we have gotten enough paint on our paintbrush and you're not going to see it cuz watercolor is very light, we're going to first color our pie shaped piece right here. Now, when you're watercoloring, it's very important to try to keep your area wet because watercolors work best with water. So we might have to go back into our water, dip it in there, and then keep working on our pie piece. They're not going to be super bright colors, and we're not trying to get them very bright. We're just trying to get them to where they are on the paper. And you see how I accidentally made a mistake, and I accidentally got outside of the lines right here. Well, luckily for you, sometimes mistakes happen and I can explain what to do when that happens. When that happens, you are gonna get a little bit of water on your paintbrush and you can take the water, just water, not a color, just water, and kind of dab out your water, your color off of the paper. And then you can take a paper towel and dab that area so that way you really can't see it anymore. That's the great thing about watercolors is that they are very, very, very useful if you accidentally make mistakes. Now we're going to move on to our blue color. So we're going to skip a middle spot because this is gonna be the spot that we're gonna mix colors together to make colors. So we're going to skip over this spot and color this one blue. Using your watercolor palette, get some water on your paintbrush and then dip it in your blue color. 
And just like we did with the red, you wanna get it nice and wet and you might have to go back into your water and just get it on your paintbrush. We're not trying to see it on our paintbrush. We're just making sure that it's on the paintbrush. Now we're gonna take it and we're gonna draw it and color it in on this pie shape piece. Being very careful to try to stay in the lines, but knowing that a paintbrush is sometimes hard to work with. And you might go back into some water so that way you can spread it around because that's how we spread our watercolors is through water and making sure that all of our piece is nice and covered. Next, we're gonna use a yellow. That is our last primary color. So now you're gonna get some water. You're gonna get some water and you're gonna dip it into your yellow just like we have with all the other colors. Not being sure not to dig, just swishing it around a little bit and then you're gonna color it on this middle piece. So I'm gonna get a little bit more water and make sure that I am keeping it nice and wet. A Little bit more water and a little bit more paint. So that way our color will show up. You might have to do it several times. Yellow is a hard color to make and to keep on the paper because it's very light but make sure that we filled in all of our pie shaped piece. Now we're gonna move on to the fun part. So we're going to first start by making purple. Purple is a secondary color. Purple is made from mixing red and blue together. So first we're gonna take, dip our paintbrush in some water and dip our paintbrush into red. And we're gonna kind of squiggle it out a little bit. Now we're gonna go back into our water and mix our paintbrush off and we're gonna get blue. It's gonna look messy at first until we start to mix the colors together. So now we need some more water. And you see it kind of looks bluish so you might need to add some more red it's all about experimenting with your colors and it'll start to turn purple isn't that so cool that you can mix colors together to make another color who knew if your favorite color was purple, did you know that you mixed red and blue together to get purple? Now that we have a good purple, we're gonna move on to our next secondary color. Our next secondary color is what? Green. Green is made by mixing yellow and blue together. So we're gonna put it in between our yellow and blue pie shape pieces. We're first gonna mix off all of your extra paint in your water, and then we're gonna go into our yellow. And we're gonna kinda do the same thing where you just lightly put it down. You don't need to make it perfect, it's just to have something there and then you want to wash off your yellow and get some blue not too much blue we don't want to overpower the yellow and you see how it's slowly turning green looks like we need a little bit more yellow so take some yellow and start really mixing them and it should turn to a grass colored green. Isn't 
Isn't that awesome? Of course, they're not like the colors that you might see in crayons, but they are very close. Now, we're gonna move on to our last secondary color, which is orange. Orange is made by mixing the two primary colors together, red and yellow. So we're gonna put our orange in between our red and yellow pie-shaped pieces. We're first gonna start by putting the yellow down, just like we did with the making the green. So we're gonna put a few little squiggles down. And then we're gonna take a little bit of red, not much, we don't want it to overpower the yellow. But we're gonna take our red and mix it on top of our yellow. And right now it kind of looks very close to a red, so it looks like we're gonna need a little bit more yellow. And slowly you should start seeing it mix to orange. And that is how we use our primary colors to make secondary colors. Now our last part of this project is coloring our snail's body. And this is the fun part. You can use your practice with making different colors to color the snail's body whatever color you want to. I think I'm gonna make mine orange. So, in my example photo, I just made it red. So you can make it whatever color you want to make it. But if you wanna practice mixing your colors, you can use your mixing theory. So we're going to add some yellow to our snail's body because I wanna make it orange. So I'm just gonna put stripes of yellow. They don't have to be perfect because remember, we're gonna smooth them all out when I add the red. And then I'm gonna go back through and add some red. Not too much, just enough. To blend our colors together. And of course I'm gonna need some more water because this is a larger area to work with. So you might have to keep dipping back into your water. And you might need to dip back into some of your colors to make your orange a little bit brighter or whatever color you choose. Just like we did with making our pie shaped pieces, we had to dip back into some colors to make our colors more vibrant or look a little bit different. The fun part about mixing colors is that you can make many different shades of colors through mixing them. I'm gonna need a little bit more water. I'm gonna need a little bit more color to make sure that I get mine nice and orangey. Little bit yellow. And when you are happy with the color of your snail, you can stop. So I am happy with the color of my snail. So now I'm gonna add a few background pieces just to add a little life to the snail. So you see on this example, I added a few little pieces of grass with watercolor and I added some clouds with watercolor. And so I'm gonna go back into my yellow cause I've got to make 
green by mixing yellow and blue together. So I need to add some yellow pieces of grass. It's gonna look crazy at first because yellow grass is not, we're not used to yellow grass, but then I'm gonna go back on top of that with some blue. Not too much blue, remember, we don't want it to overpower. And then sometimes it might look a little bit more bluish, so we've got to go back into our yellow. And see, slowly making green. It's just you have to be patient with the process. Let's do this side. And you might add a few little sprigs. Grass doesn't look perfect. You just have to play with it and make it your own. And now we're going to make some blue clouds. So that way you're able to see them. Clouds are usually white or gray, but so that, so that way we can see them, we're gonna make them blue. So I'm gonna go into my blue. I don't need to mix any colors together to make this, because remember, blue is a primary color. And then I'm just gonna kind of lightly make some clouds. They don't have to look perfect. They can look however you want them to. I'm gonna might add a few more, a bit more water to it. I might puff them up a little bit. You can just play around with this part of the project and just experiment with the watercolors. So once you are happy with the way that the clouds and the grass and your snail looks, we have to let this dry. It'll probably take it about 10 to 15 minutes to dry well. So you're gonna have to set it in a place, in a safe place that nobody will mess with it and just let it dry. And then when once it dries, we'll come back together and finish our snail. After waiting about 15 minutes to let our snail dry, we can now add the last part to our snail, which is a face. He needs a face to make him look happy. So with a dark marker or any marker that you have on hand, you can just add a cute little eyeball. I'm gonna give him a cute little eyeball and then a little mouth on the side to really show that he is a happy snail full of secondary and primary watercolors. The last thing you want to do is to write your name on the back. So flip it over and write your name. I'm gonna put Miss Riley. Now that we have done our watercolor snail, let's do a quick recap of what all we learned today. We learned about color. Color is how we describe something based on the way that it reflects light. Just like all the different colors on Miss Riley's shirt, we can say that's yellow because it's the way that it reflects light. We learned about the color wheel, which taught us about primary and secondary colors. The color wheel is just a diagram that shows us all the different colors and how we make them. We learned about primary colors, which are the colors that we can use to make other colors like red, blue, and yellow. And we learned about secondary colors, which are colors that we can mix two primary colors to make. So that's our purple, our green and our orange. And we made these colors by using watercolor, which is paint and water mixed together to make a beautiful painting. So I just wanna let you know that we will be having an oral assessment on this where you have to tell me the primary colors and the secondary colors. So I hope that you look over your watercolor snail and really learn what the primary and secondary colors are. 
I am so glad that you joined me today, and I hope you had such a fun time on our adventure making a watercolor snail. Thanks for joining me, and I hope you have a really good day.